Welcome to IT Sec Hub. So today's video is on essential Linux commands. In this tutorial, I will guide you from basic Linux commands to the advanced. Then we will learn shell scripting which can be used to automate tedious or repetitive tasks. To start with the video, we will open the terminal. The terminal is associated with a program called Shell. Its duty is to act as an interface between user and the kernel. There are lots of shells available. The Bash shell or the Born Again shell is the most popular out of them. So we have the Born shell which is developed by AT&T Bell Labs and the Born shell is regarded as the first Unix shell. Then the most popular Born Again shell and we have C shell and the corn shell and z shell. Now each shell has its own syntax and set of features, but they all share a common purpose of providing a command line interface for interacting with the operating system or the kernel. So to begin with the video, let's see what is the shell we are using. So we'll go back to the terminal. To identify what shell we are using, there are several ways. The first method is by analyzing the environmental variables. Now in simple words, an environment variable is a variable with the name and an associated value. So it provides information to the kernel or the operating system and applications running on it. So let's see what are the available environment variables in our Linux machine. So I am using my Kali box. Just to add one thing on Kali. Kali Linux is a popular open source operating system specially designed for penetration testing and digital forensics. It has many pen testing tools like Wireshark and Nmap. I have done several videos on the use of Wireshark and Nmap so you can watch them in ITSEC Hub. So coming back to the topic, we will type env. That is the environmental variable and press enter. So this lists down the available environment variables. So you have the Java options. Then you have the path environment variable. And you have shell environment variable, the session manager, language and so on. So here you can see this shell environment variable. So this is related to the shell program that we are using. So the default shell program we are currently using is bash. The path to the bash shell program is given here. So it is assigned as a value to the shell environment variable. So the same result can be taken out by the command print env. So this command print the environmental variables value. So the environmental variable that we want to print is shell. So it gives the same result. The value of the shell environment variable is the path to the shell program. So it is USR bin bash. Now if you type another environment variable We'll say, we'll say it is path. So it gives the value for the path environment variable. So this is how you print the value for the environment variable. So by printing the value of the shell environment variable, we can say that the default shell program in our terminal is bash. So there's another method to find out the default shell program. So we can use the echo command. What echo command does is it prints the line of text or strings on the terminal. Now if we type echo, then a text. So we'll say the text is name. So it will print name in the next line. Now the echo command can be used to print the value of a variable. Now we can assign a value to 
a variable so we'll say the variable name is name and the value we need to assign to name variable is it sec hub so the name is the variable and the it sec hub is the value to be assigned to the name so we'll print the value of the variable so echo to get the value of the variable we type dollar mark in front of the variable so echo dollar mark then the variable so the value of the variable is it sec hub my variable name is name so shell is an environment variable so it has a value the value of it is the path to the default shell program so we can print the value of the environment variable so we'll type echo then the dollar mark then the environment variable name so it is usr bin bash so this is the second method to find out the default shell program in the terminal so the third method is to use the which command in linux which command is used to locate the executable files or location of a program from the file system which command prints the path for the specified file or the command so this is quite straightforward to use so if we type which ls it gives the path for the executable file ls normally all executable files reside in the bin directory in linux so if we press enter you can see the path for the ls executable file or the ls command so by running ls on the terminal or in shell means we are executing the ls file in usr bin normally ls command is used in linux to list down the content in the directory so we will see the use of ls in our next video now if we use which command with the environment variable it will print the path associated with it so we type which dollar mark shell so it means we are obtaining the path of the shell environment variable so you can see the bash shell program is in usr bin earlier i mentioned there are a lot of shell programs available in linux so bash is one of them so let's see what are the available shell programs in our linux machine so there are a file called shells in the etc directory so we can see the content of it using the cat command so if we type cat then slash etc slash shells this will list down all the available shell programs so we have sh dash bash r bash zsh tmux powershell and so on now other than printing the content of a file onto the terminal we can use cat command to write some text into the file as well so we can write using this greater than symbol to a file we will say the file name is w.txt so we will talk about in a later video now we will say we want to change it from bash to zsh so the command to do it is change shell so chsh means change shell with the parameter s and dollar mark within the bracket you can type which command and the shell program that you want to change to so it is zsh so this means we are taking the path of the zsh by the which command and passing that value to the change shell command so we are currently in bash and now we are going to change the default shell program it to zsh so it is asking for the sudo password and done now now let's see what has happened we'll type which
shell. Now still it shows we are on bash. Now to be effective the change you have to reboot the system. So we will type reboot. So this will reboot your Linux machine. Now my machine is rebooted and we will open the terminal. Now let's see what is the shell we are having. So we can use which command with the dollar mark then shell. So it is changed from bash to zsh. Now the last method to find the shell. Now there is a command to see the running processes. So the ps command lists down the currently running processes. So there are two processes running. One is zsh, the other one is the ps command itself. So this indicates the zsh is the current default shell program. So my preferred shell program is bash. So we'll change the terminal again to bash. So we'll type change shell minus s then dollar mark which then bash so this will change the shell program from zsh to bash then the password and of course you need to reboot the system okay let's open the terminal And let's see what has happened. We'll type ps instead of which command. So we are back to bash. So let's recap what we have learned so far. We learned about the shell and how to find the path for the shell program. So while doing this, we learned about the environmental variable and how to print the value associated with it. So we learned about the echo command and how to print the value of a variable and also how to assign a value to a variable. Then the which command and how to use it to print the path of a command and also to identify the default shell program. Then we also learned how to change the default shell program using chsh command and then we learned about the ps command which is used to identify the currently running processes and this can be also used to find the available shell. So with this I will finish the first part of this series and in part 2 we will start from the basic commands of Linux. So stay tuned with IT Sec Cup and please subscribe for more new videos.